All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our membership meeting for September. I'm Ryan Setzer, President of the Federation. We'll start with a roll call. Acadia 2, absent. Andover A, absent. Andover B, absent. Andover C, absent. Andover D, absent. Andover E, absent. Andover F, Absent. Andover G. Absent. Andover H. Absent. Bedford B. Absent. Bedford B as in Bravo. Bedford E. Absent. Bedford F. Absent. Bedford J, absent. Cambridge A, absent. Cambridge C, absent. Cambridge E, absent. Cambridge F, absent. Cambridge J, absent. Cambridge K, absent. Cambridge L, absent. Canton Court D, absent. Corinth, absent. Devonshire, absent. Dorchester C, absent. Yeah. Dorchester C present. Dorchester D absent. Edinburgh absent. Fairfield B absent. Fairfield F absent. Gloucester C absent. Gloucester D, absent. D as in door. Gloucester E. No, Gloucester G, absent. Gloucester H, absent. Gloucester J, absent. Gloucester K, absent. Gloucester L, absent. Gloucester N, absent. Gloucester P, absent. Highgate B, absent. Highgate E, absent. Highgate F, absent. Highgate 3, absent. Highgate 4, present. Yes, sir. Huntington, or Huntington, sorry. Huntington, absent. Inverness, absent. Knowles 1, absent. Knowles 2, Absent. Knowles three. Absent. Lancaster two. Absent. Manchester three. Absent. Manchester four. Absent. 
Nantucket one, absent. Oakley Green, absent. Quail Pass, absent. Radisson one, absent. Richmond, absent. Somerset, absent. Southampton two, absent. Yorkshire or Yorkshire, absent. Mr. President, you have uh, 3,239 units and represented by 58.6% and you have a firm. All right, I'm going to make an assessment that uh, people are comfortable and happy right now. So they weren't, this place would be packed. That's good. That's actually good. That we're, we're feeling good. But it, the apathy should not rule the day. So we do need to reach out to everybody and get them to come in. I know we're still at the end of the season. People will start coming in more and more, and that'll be great. So welcome this morning to uh, everybody that's here. Uh, let's uh, I'm calling the meeting to order. Let's start by pledging allegiance to the flag. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the We have uh, no uh, business on our agenda today, so technically our open forum is not necessarily uh, applicable, but we will be doing the good and welfare, and we will certainly open up for comments from the group at your meeting. Uh, let's uh, start by, if I can get a motion to, uh, without objection, to go ahead and uh, put, uh, accept the uh, minutes from May 17th. The draft on that as written. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. So moved. So it will be posted as written. If there's any corrections or any uh, need, uh, needed adjustments, please let us know. Let's start with our reports. Oh, second. second. It was without objections. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Everybody raise your hand. We'll do it. Got it? We got it. All right. We're good. Thank you. Posted as written. Uh, let's go ahead and do our management reports. Go ahead, uh, well, Rick, you stood up, but I'm going to call Ginger first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead, Rick. I'm just kidding you. Go ahead. You got the PowerPoint set. Go ahead. Seriously. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It was just perfect. I mean, you gave it to me. Thank you. Thank you. The microphone is on live via satellite all the way from the Veterans Theater here. <clears throat> that was one of our first calls uh, uh, today. It's the Global Service Center number 10, and it was to put fun, to put fun in all of your work. So we just did that. Okay. Fun in the meeting. We're good. All right. All of our financials are being completed by the 21st day uh, of the month for the preceding months. For those that uh, treasurers or board members that need a conference uh, with Debbie Lauber, uh, just contact our office and schedule that. Next. We are uh, finalizing uh, all the meeting uh, schedules. Those have been finalized, but uh, your setups, uh, everyone, every association uh, should have received or it's, if you haven't seen it yet, it's over in your mailbox, uh, over in the First Service Residential Office. So please check your mailbox. That is all of your annual meeting, your dates. Uh, it, it talks about any special uh, setup that you want, so we can coordinate that with Vesta regarding uh, any water, coffee, uh, set up on tables or things. So that's a part of it. The other one is, uh, is your amendments. Uh, we have our basic amendments, which is the one couple waiving or, or uh, items regarding the COA uh, is in there. Sometimes the uh, audit waiving. 
uh, is in there also. So anyways, you're, and any amendment that you would want to add, it kind of gives you the heads up to get started on that. So we, you need to complete that form, sign it, and get it back to your manager, your community association manager of your association. Uh, and then the date is October the 5th. And then that starts everything rolling from there for first notices to go up. And next. And budgets. We are coordinating the budgets also uh, to get ready. Uh, we're working with Alan and the uh, Finance Committee on that. Uh, all of those, uh, Alan may speak to that uh, a little bit on your report. No. Your timeline. Uh, everything that we provide for you uh, from a, your budgets for a first draft of your budget will be all put together. We'll, we'll give you more detail next month, but the heads up uh, is for Friday, November 15th. You can write that one down. That's your date for the budget meeting, budget presentation, and also the, the budget uh, approval for the federation budget. But uh, we'll, we'll have all the information for your individual budgets, your reserves, uh, sheets, and, and everything in your packet so that then you can formulate your budget prior to your um, annual meeting. We also had last Friday right in here uh, a great participation for the uh, landscape meeting. Dave may speak to that more. May speak to that more, so I won't take any more of his thunder, and uh, we'll move on to the next. Great, great participation, thank you. And uh, part of that, we are tracking uh, the work orders that was presented, and uh, we these were the work orders for August, and uh, as you can as you can see. Uh, that's section one, section two, section three, and section four for August. And, and that's the quantity, that's the number of orders by section. And these are the number of work orders by type. Turf work orders, a little over 20. Pruning work orders, are those are your two highest ones. And then drainage, cleanup, uh, weeds, and quotes or proposals that you might be requesting. Next. Our OLM inspection uh, was uh, in, uh, uh, we'll, the, the next one will be uh, in September 23rd, that's Monday, coming up, so uh, that's a graded inspection by OLM. The mulch program uh, started on Monday, and uh, the installation and staging Schedule is on the kpscc.com landscape page, and we appreciate everybody's assistant on that, assistance on that. Go to the next slide and they'll see the wonderful pictures. She, we were working at it. Maybe it's a... Ah, there you go. Yeah, those That mulch, I tell you, that mulch. Anyways, uh, the first, this is Somerset, all done with their mulch. They had uh, pine bark, I believe, is what they had. And uh, all in the front, so that was done yesterday. Uh, they also are doing uh, Worthington uh, yesterday and Yorkshire. And uh, this is them working right down here in Yorkshire. And uh, things are going really well. Uh, Daryl's out. Uh, coordinating with Sean. That's Sean's vehicle right there. He's the um, sales slash director of operations for Florida Mulch. So we have him with his crews right there and uh, that's the Kubota that takes the uh, bags. The, the item that I want to say is, and I really appreciate uh, working, I know Mabel uh, working with each one of you. These are all in pallets in 50 bags per pallet. So we thank you for upping your bag by 10 count, 10 bags or 12 bags. 
so that all the bags from the factory, from the, the site, the Florida mulch site, are all packed in 50s. And uh, this one here is 15 pallets, and it's uh, 50 bags. Anybody know the answer to that one? Oh, 750. So it's pretty, pretty simple to, to make sure that you got the number of bags that you ordered. So that's how that works. Uh, and we appreciate, appreciate your help on this. And uh, we'll keep it, keep it moving. Next. And uh, these are how, how we're doing uh, year to date on our transfer fees compared to last year. Uh, 2018 was a little bit higher, a little over 400. And this year just slightly down. Uh, and then our lease is the same uh, trend uh, for, for year to date. Uh, when things come back from the fall, uh, the activity really increases on that. Next. We also, uh, I didn't want to leave you out on this uh, slide. We had a couple of these slides uh, at last Friday's meeting regarding the plan of action that we have, uh, that the master has also for road clearing uh, to make sure all the trees after 35 miles an hour, uh, then the re response teams can be out uh, there uh, helping the community get back after any uh, large storm that would come through. We have, uh, so they're watching out there in the Atlantic. Hopefully they just stay out there in the Atlantic. We also have uh, given you all of the, the guides uh, for hurricane guides information that you have. Uh, and we have a lot of resources that we draw from. Uh, I know Mike Bardell uh, had a great idea along with the emergency squad and they came up with telephone system that would be delivered right to myself and, and to Ginger uh, that can we can communicate whether the cell towers go down or whatever. So really, uh, really have made a great improvement on, on that communications. Because uh, when everything is chaotic, it's sure nice to know to talk to somebody who can help you take care of what it is that's being done. So we, we appreciate that uh, addition to our, our communication. And what's that number? Now this is for non-medical emergencies, so this one, medical emergencies or life and death emergencies, this one is, a, is our number, 813-642-8990, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, that's the number of the call in case of emergency, and then we'll coordinate everything from there uh, to the right uh, source that needs uh, resource. Next. And uh, these are just uh, areas where, uh, on the kpscc.com, where you uh, will find different uh, information things. Uh, also, the, the reminders. This is really good. Uh, data so far this, this year uh, is, it has improved uh, by, by almost uh, 40% uh, because you're turning off lights, you're turning off fans, you're turning off water before you leave your unit for any, any amount of time. So great job on that, keep that going. If any of your emails change or your uh, information changes, please contact our office and uh, we'll make that change in our database so that everybody can reach whoever is needed in case of emergency. Thank you and have a great month. Andrew? Good morning, everybody. It's always nice when membership starts up again. It's kind of the demarcation for our season. We used to say season began in November, but uh, we're, we're pretty busy year round, but definitely it's nice when membership starts up again. We'll go ahead and get started here. With our entertainment report, the summer series is winding down. You can see the numbers there, just over 1,900 tickets for 22,000 in uh, ticket sales. We spent 12,300 on the acts, so that recovered about 184% of those, uh, of the uh, entertainment. The last show is coming up on October 17th, Todd Bogue and Eric Carnes. 
an ever popular, we have our Active Aging Week coming up. The, uh, the, this is always uh, looked forward to. The, the team has a whole bunch of shenanigans going on. They've got scavenger hunts and uh, a two-mile walk, uh, flu shots. They've got active adult field trips. And you can either even go to Zumba in your pajamas. We've got the, the Zumba jam, so uh, you got to make sure they're nice and loose, I guess. Um, we also have a healthy cooking class with Chef Mark in Culinary Room, and also the activities open house. So it's a it's a whole week of, of just uh, fun, and we hope to see a lot of people come out and, and enjoy uh, those activities with their friends. Upcoming events, got a number of things going on here. The team is, I promise, they'd, they'd uh, I get them out there. Uh, activities open house, February, or I'm sorry, September 27th. We've got the garage sale, always very popular here. It's resident only on October 4th, and then open uh, on October 5th, 9 to 1. We've got our fall expo in the Veterans Theater on October 25th. The food truck rally on November 4th with the ever popular Vicki Ryan performing. We have, it's five o'clock somewhere. Uh, this is a new event. Uh, stay tuned for more details on that on November 20th. And the Brandon Ballet, very popular event in December. Tickets go on sale early in October. And the New Year's Eve bash. It's always a, a really fun party. We also would like to welcome back Matthew Permuth to the VESTA team. He is going to be handling program development for us. And I've been asked, well, what is what does that mean? Um, you all know Matthew from working here for six years. Uh, he, we've asked him to come and uh, provide some new exciting programming. He's exceptional at this. Uh, he's going to bring in a speaker series and the return of not the Jedi. It's going to be our health and wellness expo. Uh, he's also working um, with some initiatives on, on growing the theater and spa program. And he's got some fun events. I already mentioned uh, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. He's going to have game show nights. We're going to have neighborhood wars. And shh, I hear there's rumors of another lip sync coming up in our future. So, um, Also, since we have a very diverse uh, customer base here and there's um, lots of activity and fun, but there's also opportunity to develop some programming for other folks as well. He's bringing in a Helping Hands program, which helps identify seniors in need of continuing care that uh, he'll, he'll work with uh, folks that know a neighbor or somebody that's not able to um, handle their own condition and in, in living independently in their home. He's also working with the squad. We're great fans of the squad, an extraordinary organization in this community for a golf tournament fundraiser and doing some business networking and sponsorship. So in future meetings, he'll be up to the mic letting you know some, some things that are going on. Fitness center usage, uh, here it is. This is basically August in uh, two, uh, fiscal year uh, Today, August 2018 against 2019, these programs all, always remain very consistent, which we like to see. Nice that they increase, it's a 3% increase combined for the fit, fitness center usage as well as the group exercise. We don't ever want to see that decline then because we'll have to fuss at people to get out to the fitness center more. Um, we've got spa serenity uh, usage for August. Uh, we're 20,890 in sales and services, and the spa uh, program that was open to the CA member, this is uh, a trial, we're coming up almost on a year, uh, but we've served 249 clients from the CA, just over 14,000 there in revenue. So that's been very successful, and the board has um, suggested we keep promoting and, and grow that a little bit more. So. Looking forward to that. Here's how that looks year over year in the spa. Uh, it was kind of interesting to put this chart up there of the sales and services, um, or service and merchandise sales year over year. When we first opened the spa, a slight bump up at 2%. In the year 17, 18, uh, extraordinary growth there. And then again, we still like to see that growing, so we'll put those trend lines up uh, each month for you. On your guest pass and pointer ad sales, I won't read numbers here, but um, just point out the armband event. This was a, another initiative 
uh, to make sure that people going to certain events at the South Club that were guests, that they paid the 250 and they had the armband. To date on those 93 events, we've issued over 18,000 bands. It's about 5% our guests that come in and do buy uh, a band for that special event they're going to. Here's your lottery sales. Um, always pointing out the online versus the scratch-offs. Not sure what's wrong with that picture, but I know which ticket I would buy if I was a lottery buying ticket person. Uh, Kings Point receives $438 uh, for the month of August on the sales of those lottery tickets. They sure don't give a very big split, do they? No. Um, you will see now that Recreation will be including the transportation numbers. Um, there's these uh, ticket sales will be so. I'll put the names together here because. Uh, you're used to seeing it just as transportation, but we had three trips go out in August. 68% um, occupancy, it's usually our slowest month, it's hot out there, but that those numbers will climb as season starts up again. And how about this topic in the news, smoking at the South Club. Uh, you may be aware we have a newly established patio to the east of Palm Court by the Septa Pro Shop. Uh, it's got some sh shade out there now for folks to, uh, they, uh, they are smokers to um, use that area where the smoke won't impact others who don't appreciate it. And also coming soon, we're looking at a new area outside the fence of the South Club pool where we'll have to, we have to clear some, some brush and things and put another similar type of uh, scenario there where people can uh, smoke and then not impact folks that are on the pool deck. So that, that will be coming soon. Um, I won't read all these. These are the projects going on. We've got a replacement tram coming in mid-October. Uh, a lot of these will say, uh, you know, underway, you know, they're just jobs that we're working on that have been in your budget and the plan. Uh, South Club roof, uh, the pickleball and shade structure. Um, we've got the 2020 doors, uh, that project. It was nearing completion, the vendor came out, and as they were checking the concrete, they found uh, a section of the concrete that wasn't uh, to their satisfaction, and it, uh, it had some bubble or air in it or something that, that they felt would be a problem down the road and crumble, so they, they, they wanted to redo that, and I said, go for it, you know, I don't want something that's going to be inadequate, so they're working on that. And then on the board approved project of the construction and the new lawn rolling green, they're still slating that for mid-October delivery. Weather permitting. Here's your security numbers. Uh, always a lot of traffic here, no matter what the month. But um, they did count Labor Day. They had over 17,000 vehicles come through on Labor Day weekend. So a lot of traffic at the gate um, from through guests. And here's a, oh, sorry, a notable uh, short video has been distributed on channel 732 goal of helping to inform our residents about the various security rules in place for guest access, the golf cart gate access, and, and the requirement to show your badge to the guards in the facilities when you are asked for it. And finally, a little good news. We were informed that the ICAA has awarded the Beacon Award to Kings Point Sun City Center in Vesta. This is a designation of being one of the top 25 wellness communities in North America. It honors senior living communities whose achievements, innovations, directions, or commitments in the field of wellness stand out as a guiding light for all senior communities. I don't, congratulations to Kings Point. I don't actually have it in hand, so I, we have a picture of it. So when we do get the award, we're actually gonna bring it in and show you all, because that's a, a very nice achievement, so. Sorry that was so long. Thank you, Mr. President, that's my report. Thank you. Um, December 15th. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Let's start with some committee reports. Dave McGraw with the landscaping. Let us know. What's going on? Um, last Friday, we held a workshop for POCs. Uh, it was well attended. Uh, the topics of discussion uh, included uh, the new work order system, uh, something that I'm very enthusiastic about. Uh, we currently now, when we put a work order in the system, you get a notification back that that work order has been put into the system, and then the clock starts ticking. 
the contractor has five days to respond. In the background, Mabel is calling the contractor saying, what's the status, what's the status? And she's doing a lot of this now, I understand. So, But the idea is to get your work order responded to in five days. Uh, we're also being able now to have statistics on what contractor is not performing, what type of issues are being put in on work order so we can actually track it. We have data now. So we're very enthusiastic about the new work order system. Uh, we've also implemented uh, with Daryl Flint, he is currently every day going out to look at the deliverables of the contractor uh, to contract. So if they didn't mow, he catches it and we're going to take that into consideration when we grade each contractor at the end of the month. Uh, Paul Woods also gave a, a good presentation on some of the specific landscape diseases and what goes on from his point of view. And at the end, we also had a question and answer period, which was uh, 25 questions from the community, which uh, we answered as the uh, landscape committee. So I hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to having more in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Rick Massime with the uh, promotions committee. Good morning, all. Uh, at the next meeting, next membership meeting next month, the uh, Community Pro Promotion Committee uh, intends to give you a short presentation. Uh, and let me pre basically tell you what it's about. One of the items that has been tasked for the CPC Committee is to weigh our association against other 50 or 5 and over organizations in the area. They took on the challenge, and in a nine-county area, they found 70-odd, over 55 communities. Those communities were compared with ours with a 32-point 32, 32 comparison point. That information will be presented to you at next month's meeting. I think you'll find it interesting when you see how we compare to the other associations in the 55 areas. Thank you. Hey, Rick. We have uh, Jack with the contract committee. Uh, we've had somewhat of a pretty busy summer. Uh, for the members who don't know, our attorney of many years, Eric Appleton, uh, decided to resign. Uh, the contract committee will be looking for a new corporate counsel. Uh, in the interim, uh, we contacted, the Federation Board contacted uh, Bush Ross, asked Bush Ross if they, because they had all our records except for the last year, year and a half, uh, would be willing to work with us as our attorney of record. They have accepted us uh, as a client. They understand that we will be doing a search for a uh, Federation attorney. But, and they have agreed to work in the interim, and I think that the members on the board that have worked with uh, Webb Mountain, who is the attorney of record now for the Federation, uh, have found him to be very competent and uh, very diligent in any questions we've asked him. Uh, second thing the contract committee is working on is that as of the end of March of next year, our contract with First Service is up. We started negotiations with First Service about two months ago, and we are very heavily into working with First Service and putting together a contract that hopefully remains within our existing budget, if not possibly a little less, so we wouldn't see any increase. We have uh, talked to them about some additional employees, which they have graciously agreed to include into their proposal to us, we would hope, and what we are shooting for is to have the first services contract uh, resolved, wrapped up, and ready for membership approval before year end, so we are not waiting till last minute and coming to the membership and saying, oh, we have to have this contract signed within the next two weeks. Uh, we want to have this done months ahead of time 
so you people will know exactly what is going to happen and it will also be able to be included in your budgets that each association will be handling. Uh, one of the biggest concerns in the community that has been brought to the Federation's attention is the work of Terminex, who is our pest control company. Uh, I and Rick had a meeting with Terminex. They have been given notice. They have 30 days to bring the contract into compliance. Uh, we received a notification from them earlier this week that they don't know how they're going to do it. We have therefore requested that their regional president come to visit with the federation representative, which would be myself, and with Rick. And they are basically going to be told, if you don't really want our contract, tell us that. But our contract calls that the residents should get a two to three day turnaround when they call in. Right now they're at about a three week turnaround. Uh, that is totally unacceptable, not only to the residents, but also to the Federation Board. And that is one of the main things. The other thing is their attitude to the residents when they're performing the work and their lack of truly uh, doing their work appropriately within the thing, am I correct, Rick? Uh, the last thing, and uh, Dave touched on it uh, briefly, and we have worked with First Service and OLM, is the scoring that our landscapers have traditionally had have just been based upon their quality of work. Uh, one of the things that First Service is doing and Daryl is doing, and one of the reasons we are doing so much tracking is that scoring going forward and the landscapers have been made aware of it will not only now include quality of work but quantity of work and if the landscapers fail to do the statement of work as outlined in the contract they will be gigged for it and if they fail to pass the inspection they will lose money for it so we have decided that have contractors that do great work on one or two bushes but miss an entire section and we are tracking exactly and it's one of the reasons the work order system is so important to us is we can go back to these contractors and say we're sorry you are not meeting the terms of your contract and we are not going to pay you for work you are not performing. And it all goes to the scoring sheet. And Dave and the entire landscape of committee have worked very hard with First Service and the contract committee in getting this put into place. And basically, that's the report I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, and I would like to compliment everybody that's working on all those different uh, different uh, activities and ideas. The landscaping committees come together to really focus in on the issues. Uh, working on education, Jack and, and, and Dan on the and, and Rick on the uh, contract committee are reviewing uh, very regularly all the uh, specifics, and we are now holding people accountable. And, uh, most importantly, and I want to thank uh, Rick for his work on creating better measurements with the work order system because it's been said years and years ago and Dale you'll remember I said this about a year year and a half ago when we first met if you can't measure it you can't manage it and uh, we're measuring things now we're measuring performance we're actually having um, evidence of what's happening and what's not happening and they're working very hard to, uh, to make this happen so I, I appreciate all your work on that um, uh, Frank, is there anything you want to update us on with the uh, palm and tree? I, uh, but everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Frank Rezawali. I was uh, recently appointed to the board uh, to fulfill the unexpired term of uh, Ken Winter, the district uh, eight representative. Uh, recently, we've had some requests uh, from the associations concerning the palm trimming uh, that they wanted to advance it. Uh, we discussed. I discussed this with uh, Daryl, who contacted uh, Grow Incorporated. Uh, their response is that uh, if we advance the pruning of the palms, uh, the seeds, the palm seeds will flower and they will be left on the trees until April, uh, thus creating an additional mess for the associations that they may have to undertake uh, to 
pay someone to clean up the mess in the interim. We uh, entered into this contract with Coral Incorporated because they're the experts on, the, on tree management. Uh, I'm going to trust their expertise at this point and uh, go along with their schedule. They set the schedule based on the growth of the palms, and I think uh, it's prudent for us to follow that schedule. If there's something that's of real critical importance, a palm from uh, maybe damaging the roof, uh, the association should take care of it appropriately. Uh, other than that, we're going to stick to the schedule. Uh, I've gotten good reports back, for the most part, on how they're performing, and hopefully they'll we'll continue to perform. We have uh, the pruning coming up right now, and October 1st is supposed to start. And then uh, next year again, it will come into another cycle. Uh, this pruning will be followed, done with a follow-up to make sure we get everything done. And then next year, we'll start the cycle again with another pruning of the palms and a pruning of the hardwoods. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, let's move forward to uh, Treasurer Alan Holland. Report for us this morning. All right. Thank you, Ryan, and good morning, everyone. I previously gave a report for the purpose of presenting a perspective of just how much the Federation is responsible for. Federation responsibility includes the bulk contracts, the clubhouse facilities and program activities relating to the land trust, and the few other administrative items the Federation handles. Actually, around $21.9 million, or about 65% of all your assessment dollars, are controlled and monitored to some extent by the Federation. However, most of what the Federation is responsible for are paid with association funds and reported elsewhere. The bulk contracts are fixed and paid regularly. Bulk contracts are separated and reported monthly on each of your individual association financial reports. It would be superfluous to report them again on my treasurer's report since the contracts are association related and not paid directly with Federation funds. All contracts represent around $10.9 million or about a third of all your assessment dollars. The management company that operates our clubhouses through the trust gives quarterly reports of all the clubhouse facility and program activity. Again, the associations fund these and it's not paid directly with Federation dollars. These trust-related dollars reports around $10.9 million, or about another one-third of all your assessment dollars. This leaves the administrative costs in the Federation budget of approximately $200,000, or roughly one-half of 1% 1 of your assessment dollars for 2019-20. Federation administrative costs are paid with Federation dollars, and that is what I report to you quarterly in my treasurer's report. Nobody has approached me and complained about my treasurer's report, but some of the board, uh, Federation board members told me that some residents have expressed to them negative reactions when I did not give a monthly report. They wanted to see a report monthly. Some also said a rumor that there were some errors in my report. I would appreciate anyone having a question of my report to come to me and let me clear it up before spreading negativity to others. Even though the Federation handles 65% of all assessments, most of it is paid directly with association funds and reported on association financial statements and the land trust quarterly reports. There's very little activity that occurs in the Federation administrative accounts. That's why I only give a quarterly report for these. But to placate those who want to hear a treasurer's report every month, I'm giving you this one-time monthly report for the month of August. Since there was so little activity again in August, I'm not going to give the full usual report. Instead, I will simply tell you that most of the revenue is automatic from fixed monthly assessments, and that's coming in right on target. In addition to the regular monthly assessment fees, 
For August, about $33 was earned in interest and transfer fee income, income of $4,300 was received. There were only eight expenditures in August, totaling $3,300. That includes electric, janitorial, telephone, internet services, one insurance deductible claim, money to maintain the websites, and a few other miscellaneous expenditures. At the September 5th master meeting, the master claimed that I said the Federation is only responsible for a small sliver of items. They even used my pie chart, which I should be honored as imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. I'm sure most of you understood from my presentations that the whole point was to show just how much the Federation is responsible for. Of all your assessments that everyone pays, about 15% is the master. Associations pay around 20% of their costs. And that leaves 65% of all Kings Point Federation uh, dollars that the Federation is responsible for. Federation responsibilities include the bulk contracts at about a third, clubhouses and program activities at around another third of all your assessments. While the Federation has responsibilities for these, they are reported separately, either monthly on your association financial statements or quarterly by VESTA for the clubhouse and program activity cost of the land trust because they are paid by your dollars, not Federation dollars. So that leaves the administrative items around one half of 1% that I report to you quarterly in my Federation Treasurer's Report because they are paid by Federation dollars. And that's my report. Thank you, Alan. Okay, very good, great. Uh, that brings you to uh, the President's Report. I've got a few notes that I will go over with uh, this morning. Uh, I'd like to say welcome back to everybody that's coming back for uh, the, the season now. It will be. Uh, more and more coming in. I appreciate that. Today is actually a milestone. Uh, a year ago, I was actually called on to uh, become the president of the Federation due to changes that occurred at, the, that, at that time on this board. It's been, I guess, very interesting and I think very, uh, very productive year. We've had some needed changes. We've mandated some improvements and uh, I'll let you know there are a lot more on the agenda coming this way. Uh, last year, my first responsibility was to um, inform you that, that uh, of the resignation of the sitting president at that time. Uh, this year, as uh, Jack has mentioned, uh, our responsibility would be to tell you that our, our attorney of record, uh, Eric Appleton, uh, has also resigned. And as Jack has said, we, according to uh, Florida State Statute 617.0502, have uh, gotten an interim attorney at this point to uh, act uh, in our uh, in our corner, and they have been uh, reported and registered with the Department of State, which is part of the, uh, the statute. Personally, actually, I'm very excited that uh, things are changing. A set of new eyes are coming in. We've got new ideas. We've got forward-thinking attitudes uh, that are being brought to bear on the property. It's actually a very good thing. Um, you, when you get these relationships go so long, sometimes they get too comfortable. We miss things. We get uh, we uh, become blinded by our own uh, uh, comfort levels. So it's uh, it's actually positive. There are a few other changes and additions that we're making to improve the processes of the oversight that we're responsible for. Uh, our next board meeting, I'm going to be introducing our new committee, which is going to be the Health and Safety Oversight Committee. They're going to be my helping eyes to help see things that are around the property, primarily focused on recreation facilities. And they're going to be looking for things that might be missed occasionally, overlooked, that can have a significant impact on the quality and value of our 55 plus experience. Uh, Director Noreen Rickett uh, will be uh, the chair and Frank will be the assistant uh, with the uh, board oversight and we're going to make an announcement looking for three to four additional community volunteers. It'll be sent out shortly so get your applications in. We all, we all need extra eyes out there. Uh, there's three final things I'll touch on. First, we're going into budget season. I'm going to make a commitment to everybody in, in our community that there's going to be a new focus and a scrutiny 
uh, applied to budgeting. We're not going to rubber stamp any activities. It's going to be uh, vetted. It's going to be examined. It's going to be looked at. More scrutiny is going to be projected on revenue producing ideas, more questions on operating expenses, more research on the accounting for the costing of amenities. That's okay. I like a musical background with my message. Okay. Uh, we're going to look for more transparency in RFEC budgeting and bidding processes. Secondly, I'm kicking off a sustainable community project uh, program. We're going to be exploring all possibilities uh, and options to create surplus revenue from available operations, better and more creative uh, promotions and innovative business restructuring. We're going to have to change our mentality. I think it's time for us to stop looking at ourselves as a retail customer and start thinking like a wholesale buyer. We are a mini city here. We've got uh, power we don't use. We've got leverage we're not exerting. We've got things we're not doing that is out there and available to us because we're thinking conventionally, not uh, at the level we should be. We're going to be revisiting the possibility of having our own real estate office on property. We're examining that. Uh, because the Master Association's video posted uh, recently, uh, ask a, uh, pose a serious question about bidding processes of our property and casualty insurance. I've instructed First Service to enhance the methods used to bring the bidding process more in line with the way we uh, competitively bid other products. I placed uh, you know, kind of rest uh, some restrictions on access to all vendors to committee members. Uh, so we make sure that we, uh, uh, we're controlling the messages that go out there that could affect our prices and could affect our coverage. Um, you know, contract committee and lawyer uh, and our lawyer are, are vetting possibilities uh, associated with even becoming a broker of our own insurance products instead of, of retail purchase. We, we actually could be involved in the purchasing process, so we're looking at the legalities there. We're restructuring. Uh, this kind of restructuring actually could mean tens of thousands of dollars that would normally leave our property would actually stay on our property and we'd be able to util utilize those more effectively. So it's just a different way of looking at things and a better way of buying. Keeps our fees low and stable. Uh, and how many people would like to keep some money on the property and have more control over your financial future here? I mean, let me see a show of hands. You know, I think it's something we should be looking at and exploring. Uh, you know, make sure you tell your directors that they, we need to be moving into a bright future and not one, you know, kind of stuck in the past and, you know, with the, con, con, um, the ideas that we've had in, in, in the past. Uh, we're going to continue to look at ways of cutting expenses, uh, new methods of analyzing our uh, sustainable energy uses, now, all of which I commit you can do without lowering the quality, reducing the customer service, or removing any amenities that we currently have if we do it correctly. Finally, the board, uh, like most people, are chatting about uh, the, uh, 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 the unification of the National Federation. I think we're all in favor of it. We had a great turnout, and I appreciate everybody showed up uh, at our joint meeting. Uh, I'd like to thank, thank Steve McGuire and, and, uh, and, and Jamie Cherry for kind of taking the lead on that. Uh, Steve shared some really good ideas about his vision of how it should look and roll out. Vice President Jack Davison from the Federation shared his thoughts with an exceptionally good alternative approach. Uh, as many of you know, the MASH and the Federation left that meeting uh, together agreeing on at least the first steps that we're going to be taking. Uh, the MASH, as I understand, Jane, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are going to be working on changing your, starting to do electronic voting, get that in place, so you can change, change your bylaws and allow the nine members of the Federation to sit with you guys on the board so we can start unifying those efforts and moving forward. I think, personally, it's a great idea. We can work together with the master to be a more efficient, productive, and transparent Kings Point Community Association and make things happen and get things done. Together, I think we can be exceptional. And I'd like to thank everybody for your time and your attention and being here and being involved in this community. Thank you. So that is my report today. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we have no unfinished business on the agenda. We have no new business on the agenda. That leaves us uh, good and welfare. Do we have any announcements from the community? All right. Okay, Forrest waving. Right there. Hop on my scooter. You want to come up and start it? Here, go here. Let's do it as well. Oh, go ahead, Vicki. Good start, okay? Um, Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, Bedford A. Um, one correction, it's Sunset Social Club is going to be not just me at the um, food truck rally in November. And, but I am going to be doing a um, 
Viva Las Divas, which is a tribute dinner and a show that the South Club is um, putting on next Wednesday. Ticket sales stop on Monday, so if you're thinking about coming to dinner and a show, um, I'd suggest you get your tickets today or, or first thing Monday morning. Um, it's going to be a really good show. I've got a, uh, my keyboardist is coming in from North Carolina. He played for Reese Witherspoon's wedding. He is amazing, and it's going to be a really great show, so I hope you can join us. Good morning, Forrest. There we go. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> uh, just want to uh, make uh, the announcement that the COA is back open five days a week from 9 a.m. to 12 noon uh, for anything that you may need. Uh, the other announcement is, is to inform you that there were, there's going to be another Meet the Candidates uh, Day, and that's going to be on October Friday, October 11th, uh, in the banquet room, and the event begins at 2 p.m. COA meeting uh, will, for October will be October 2nd, and that'll be 2 p.m. in the banquet room. Um, <clears throat> last month we had a cancel because uh, we had Tico coming in to give uh, uh, a review of what they do. Uh, the hurricane kind of uh, took them all away from us. Uh, they have their own uh, events that they have to go to, and uh, so we canceled that meeting out. But uh, October 2nd at 2 p.m. in the banquet room, uh, John Knoll, uh, he'll be uh, explaining the ZAPCAP system from TECO uh, that they do. And then they're also going to give uh, a, a program on the energy saving uh, for our units here. Uh, and they're all free, free home energy audit, free energy planning, and free neighborhood weatherization. So. Uh, it's, it's a great program, and anything that's free, uh, you should take advantage of it. The other thing uh, that, uh, and, and items that are available at the COA, uh, you, maybe you've seen these here drive-by decals uh, on the back of vehicles, and that's an indicator that uh, we should try to drive at 25 miles an hour. Um, where it's appropriate, okay? Uh, we've had speeds up to 62 miles an hour uh, that have been recorded, and uh, that's utterly outrageous, uh, especially when we have golf carts operating on our streets. Personally, I don't go on the street with my vehicle here. Uh, you know, they'd run me over for sure. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that um, uh, on Trying to find it here. Oh. I'm glad you said something. I was about ready to run over there and give you CPR. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I forgot to put my glasses on. So <laughs> right there. Uh, the uh, COA is going to be uh, uh, running a uh, Meet the Candidates uh, Day, uh, uh, and I, I we have that uh, going to be on November 11th. Marino Bakery Pastries will be uh, served that, that day, and, uh, and, that's, and that's a big event. Oh, you said earlier October 11th. Is it October or November? Which is, I mean, the candidate. Oh, meet the candidate. November, uh, October. It's October. I'm sorry. Uh, even with my glasses, I can't read. So anyway, uh, uh, the elections uh, for the master are, are you know, going to be right now. Uh, you, the nomination deadline is October 4th, so those that are running for the master office or want to run for the master uh, seats, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, we have 
just to mention another uh, brochure that we have as a handout is the uh, Kings Point Master website. Uh, so if you want to pick up one of those, uh, you know, they have their own website now. So feel free to pick them up at the COA office. Okay. Thank you, Forrest. You are quite the pitch man. I want you to know that. You did That's what I used to do. You did and I, I never did anything other than pitch. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, Ginger, could you, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you to hold for one second. We're going to introduce I just Matt, uh, wanted Matthew. to um, point out Matt Permuth, for those who don't know him, he'll be here after the meeting if anybody have any questions about any of the programs or things he'll be starting. Wave to Matt. He's over here. <laughs> Okay, everybody can hear me? Uh, for the past four years, we have received significant donations from Greg Waltz. He's the insurance agent, broker, however you want to term it, for in Kings Point, and from ANCAP, which is the insurer uh, of Kings Point. I've always been kind of curious as to why they would do it outside of their areas of where they are. Uh, but this year it kind of came out that they look for ways to help the community in which they do business. I always thought that was kind of important, but I never wanted to ask too many questions because you're so happy getting a check. Uh, this is also a special month for the emergency squad. Uh, this month we celebrate 55 years of being in existence. This is a remarkable achievement considering that it's an all-volunteer organization. We run 24-7 in the community, 365 days a year. And it's done with not only just the volunteers, but it's supported by the community. We don't take tax dollars or anything. Once in a while we get a grant. But for the most, it's supported by the community and has been for all 55 years. Don't worry about getting a bill from the emergency squad. Because even if somebody said we were going to start doing it, we wouldn't have a clue how to do it. Uh, we don't have any building department, so that would all be, uh, had to be created, and we're not going to go down that road. Uh, this October, we're doing another symposium. This one is going to be on aches and pains. If you don't have any, you may be in the wrong town. Uh, held on the 22nd in Kings Point in the theater in here in the 29th in the CA, or Community Hall. Of October. Of October, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to need to make a reservation for this, and I'm going to give you the phone number. I'll give you a minute to get your pen down so you can write down that number. Uh, if you can't come to one or the other, just because you live in Kings Point and you have an appointment with a doctor on the 22nd, you can go to Community Hall. This is one of those times when nobody cares who's coming to which one because the same information is being passed out. The goal has always been to extend the quality of life and is done by trying to teach you about what, what can happen as we get older. That telephone number is 888-685-1595. And a little bit of a change because if you hit three after you get the number, you're going to get a live person and you can tell them which one you want to do. The only thing you got to do is tell them it's the Aches and Pain Symposium. You should be able to remember that one. Sure, it's going to be the 22nd in Kings Point and the 29th in Community Hall. The doors will open at 1215 in each one. You'll get your lunch, you'll get dessert, which we know is important. And there will be some drinks there, not the alcoholic types too early. And uh, then it will be over by 3 o'clock because we know everybody wants to get out early uh, and there's only so much learning you're going to get from it, but there are going to be doctors on hand that are going to tell you. And that's what this whole thing is focused on, community learning. Uh, the last thing I'm going to tell you about is something that's coming up now more often in the last couple of years is carbon monoxide poisoning. If you're up north, you know that you have that because we have a lot more gas up north. Down here, we don't have a lot of it. I think there's about four subdivisions that have gas in their home. 
but we have a new type of problem with carbon monoxide, and that is the vehicles. Most of these vehicles that are come out now have push buttons, and they are so silent that you can get out of them and not realize you haven't shut your car off. Normally you had the key that you pulled out and that automatically shut it off. People are now leaving their car running while it's in a garage. This could cause a major problem. If you have ever gotten out of your car and left it running and didn't know it, you may want to consider one of these detectors. Um, the other one is that I have heard people have these remote starters uh, and they don't want to go out to their car in the garage and have it be hot in there. So they will start it up with the air conditioner running so they can get into it. Uh, that's also a dangerous habit. Carbon monoxide is a killer. You won't know it. You are going to be fine until you're not. Uh, and it's going to be very quick and on set with you. Uh, you're going to develop flu-like symptoms and then you're going to go down. Uh, it's, it's a real hazard, I think, coming here. Uh, and I have gotten out of my own car. Uh, it has a push button start and it ran so quiet I didn't know I didn't have it off. So that's all I have. But thank you very much. It's the 22nd. 22nd. Hey, my guy, that, that is important, to, this, particularly with the push button car. I mean, that's a that's a new habit we have to develop, and obviously, I mean, I have gas in my house, but it has nothing to do with my car. Uh, <laughs> but that's an important tip, and appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Good morning. Dale Dewar, Oxford 2. I just wanted to know, after reading the other day, that there were some updates from the CA um, on what they're doing with their fee for $125 to uh, Kings Point residents. So I'm just wondering, are there any more discussions going on or any meetings or plans on what you're doing over here in Kings Point? At this point, we are doing what we do, and we're not changing anything at this point what we're doing. They are altering theirs, as you saw in their announcement. Uh, they feel it's more maybe equitable for people who don't come over as much. So they, they believe it's going to be a good balance. I spoke, I had a conversation with uh, Sam Southern, the president, uh, the other morning before we made that announcement. And uh, I think it's a great start for them. We are just going to kind of continue our program. We would certainly appreciate all the clubs updating your roster so we actually know what we're working with and how we have it. I mean, there is a, a reasonable, uh, equitable contribution that everybody should make to the upkeep and the expenses attached to our property, just like over there. I think we do have a good program in place. We're enforcing it. We're doing more hard carding. Is that correct? Oh, you know, IVs. We're checking to see, make sure the guest passes are being paid when they, uh, when they, uh, they come in and use our stuff. Uh, and so we're doing what we do currently. Uh, I think they, they need to just kind of work through their, their situation over there, and that's what they're doing. We have no plans of, of um, changing what we're doing currently other than getting better, better rosters so we know. So that's, that's all the update we have from here, but they have changed theirs a little bit. I'm looking forward. All right. Go ahead, Jack. Before we leave, uh, I don't know how many members have not been into the theater uh, since July, but if you look down at the floor, it's an entire new floor. Uh, it was put in at your expense. Uh, you folks paid for it. Uh, it looks a lot better than the old parquet floor that we had that was here for many, many years. Uh, we would ask that you respect this floor. It is a hardwood floor. Uh, it can get marked. Uh, hopefully with the additions to the bottom of the chairs and the tables that will be limited. But I, as a member of the board, would like to thank the entire VESTA organization for the work they put in to uh, getting this floor done over the summer. I think it's a great addition to the theater and makes the theater look a lot better. Thank you. And thanks for uh, the work you guys are doing. Uh, any more good and welfare? Looks like we're not. Motion to adjourn. Go enjoy your retirement. <laughs>